Yo, yo, yo. What it is, Thumbo? It's your boy back. You know what I'm saying? With another. Um, just cool and man. I just want to give all thanks and praise for the day. Uh, for the opportunity to be able to build with the fam one more time. You know what I'm saying? All this crazy crap that's going on. And that's what I wanted to come to y'all today, man. I, I don't want to try to make this video too long. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to get through it. But, man, as you can see in the title, okay, we're talking about the abomination of desolation. And you got martial law with question marks. You feel what I'm saying? Now, what I'm what I'm bringing y'all today, it is something that I've been looking at. You feel what I'm saying? It's something that kind of popped up on me. Oh, um, you know what I'm saying? So it's not. I'm not saying this is what it is. You feel me? I ain't saying this what it is. This, this is exactly what what the scriptures is referring to. You know what I'm saying? Yada yada yada. But I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? Rock with me and see what I what I was looking at. You know what I'm saying? Just give it an eye. You feel what I'm saying? Because it's kind of crazy. You know, so I just want to I just want to make that disclaimer that I'm not saying this is what it is, because, you know, I come from the original thinking based upon these parables, the the parable of the abomination of desolation. You know, I was feeling like it was talking about the temple, the temple of Baal erected in the temple, like most people was thinking. But like I say, I want to show you, you know, what I'm saying what I what I was looking at because one night I was I was sleep man like and like every night you know what i'm saying even y'all you know, like me you know what I'm saying? we go to sleep thinking about these scriptures thinking about this information you know what i'm saying we up thinking about it and we sleep thinking about it you know what i'm saying so through my state of slumber for some reason i was thinking about the parables of abomination and death of death of desolation you know what i'm saying but it was like i was I seen the verse like in, in, my, in my slumber, in my little dream, but it wasn't really a dream because, you know, you were kind of awake a little bit. So I seen and it was like, uh, stand, you know, the verse about the abomination in Mark where it says standing where it ought not to be. Um, and I and I thought about Obama, you know, what I'm saying with the third term due to martial law. You see what I'm saying? It, it made me think about that standing where it ought not to be because he. He not supposed to be in that seat for a third term unless the Constitution is made void. And one of the only things that can make the Constitution go void for a certain period of time is martial law or state of emergency. You see what I'm saying? So, like, what I'm what I'm showing y'all today, because I was telling my folks about this before I even kind of pieced these things together, and I was like, boy, if that happened, I'm probably getting up out of this. You know what I'm saying? I ain't not even on no feel, no fleeing type. You know what I'm saying? But Check out what I'm going to say, but I'm, I'm I'm just saying, though, I was feeling like, you know what I'm saying, that might be time to bounce, because it ain't, I'm going to tell you right now, it ain't a sense of wait till Obama get in to see if he's going to implement martial law, understand that if he stays, it is only because martial law has been implemented and the Constitution has been made null and void for a certain period of time, you feel what I'm saying? So understand he gonna be in that bit because of martial law. You feel me? So now you know I'm not saying that's how it's gonna go down or whatever because you ain't got a short period of time from right now until January the 20th until inauguration with Trump. Uh, you know solidifies his seat. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I'm not saying something gonna happen in between that span of time. But I'm saying we gotta be vigilant. You feel what I'm saying? Then I'm not saying they gotta go through Obama hands as well. You know, possibly. However. But just check out the pieces in the history that I'm going to, you know what I'm saying, share with the fam. And just let me know what y'all think. You feel what I'm saying? I ain't. That's all I want to do. I just want to share this perspective that I came across. And I want to know what y'all think. You know what I'm saying? Y'all help me make sure I ain't really, you know what I'm saying? You feel me? But, so, you know what I'm saying? With all that being said, we're going to kind of go ahead and jump into the, to the information. Alright, so we're going we're gonna to start this off right here in Matthew chapter 24, where we're talking about the abomination of desolation, as you can see right there. You know what I'm saying? This is the chapter, you know, the, the, the famous chapter when, you know, Christ was upon the Mount of Olives and the disciples was asking him about the signs of the end and how should we know and he was giving them signs, you feel what I'm saying? So, based upon that chapter, now I know a lot of you, you know what I'm saying, don't really rock with the New Testament scriptures, these are just Greek. And and, and, and and this paganized Christ, you see what I'm saying? But let me go to Revelation real fast. <clears throat> so you know what I'm saying? 
put this in context as as we going as we kind of skimming through the new test the little new testament verses we're going to be touching on today you know what i'm saying i just want to um keep something in mind we're going to go to revelation 19. hold on one second let me find it. all right so check this verse out right here in revelation chapter 19 verse 10. And it said, I fell at his feet to worship him. <clears throat> and he said unto me, See thou do it not. See thou do it not. Okay. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. So that's what he said. He said, I'm thy fellow servant of thy brethren. You know what I'm saying? That has the testimony of Jesus. Now look what it say the testimony of Jesus is. <clears throat> he said, worship God. Worship the creator. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You see that right there? You know what I'm saying? For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now, what the verses we're going to be getting to, that's exactly what we're looking for and what we're looking at. So keep that in mind as we flip it through these, these words of Christ and this New Testament scripture. You know what I'm saying? We, we focusing on this right here. Okay, so coming back to Matthew chapter 24, as you can see right here. Signs at the end of time. We're going to scroll down to about verse 14. All right. And so this what this what Christ says. You can see the, the red word. <clears throat> he said, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Okay. Jump down to the abomination of desolation. Verse 15. When ye. Now check this out. This is what he said. When ye therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Okay. So right now, we got Christ prophesying, you know, giving us a little prophecy and telling us what to do, when to, when, when to flee possibly, when to leave. You see what I'm saying? He say, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, so that's going to take us to Daniel. He say, stand in the holy place. Whosoever reads, let him understand. Let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Now, Holy place, don't just take that thinking he's talking about Israel or Jerusalem because they in Jerusalem right now. You see what I'm saying? He's telling you that when you see this right here get set up, leave. Stand in the holy place. You see? Let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Okay? So we're going we gonna, to, um, I think we can pull the verse from Mark right now, but then we're going to go to Daniel. All right. So, you know what I'm saying? That's like he's saying, when that happens, where you at, bounce. You know what I'm saying? Just to keep that in perspective, but you know what I'm saying? So we jumping over here to Mark. You feel me? And so understanding these three, Mark, what we're going to be coming in today, Mark, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, these all got the same story. As you can see right here, Jesus foretells the destruction of the temple, signs of the close aid, same tabs from Matthew. You know what I'm saying? This, this, as you know, it's the same story of Christ, the same gospel of Christ, one through Matthew, one through Mark, one through Luke. You know what I'm saying? But So let's jump down to verse 14. They will, they will say in Mark. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, See what I'm saying? This one says standing where it ought not, where it ain't supposed to be standing. You feel what I'm saying? And remember what I told you that kind of made me think about. But we're gonna get we're gonna get that a little later. It say, let him that readeth understand. Then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Okay, so we got the same scenario. So as Matthew told us, uh that when you see the abomination of uh desolation, oh Mark said too, right here, spoken of by Daniel the prophet. So we're going to go to Daniel. Alright, so it's three places in Daniel that talk about this abomination of desolation. You know what I'm saying? That's uh, one of them is in Daniel 9. The other one is in Daniel 11. And the 
other one is in Daniel 12. So right now we're going to come out of Daniel 9. Um, and what we want is verse 27. But we're going to start. Um, yeah, we're going to start at 27. Y'all can catch this. You know what I'm saying. I was just looking at this right here. Until the end of the war. Desolations are determined. That was kind of interesting. I had to just peep that. But anyway. Uh, it just clicked just then. I mean. But so 27 says, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Right? See, this is a reference to the daily sacrifice. This is going to tell you in the other verses. When it say daily sacrifice, I'm going to give you what I, to my knowledge, what I think this means. And what I, you know what I'm saying, what I've been taught so far. You know what I'm saying, what I've learned so far. I ain't really did too much digging on it, but from background knowledge. I, I tell you what I understand, but I'm gonna let it say, uh, daily sacrifice before I speak on it. Um, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. You see what I'm saying? See what it say right here now? Uh -oh. It say, he shall make it desolate. Okay? So remember, it was talking about when you see the abomination, pay attention to the word. You feel what I'm saying? Because it kind of, it kind of changed. It, it, it broadens up the, you know what I'm saying? The scope of what it could be talking about because it changed. Like Matthew will say, the abomination of desolation. Then they'll say the abomination that maketh desolate. Then they'll say abominations, the overspreading of abominations. He shall make it desolate. You see what I'm saying? So just keep all that in mind. Say even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Alright, we're going to jump to 11. Okay, so now in Daniel um, 11, verse 31, it say, An arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice. See what I'm saying? Um, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. Okay? So like I say now, to my understanding, what this daily sacrifice, sacrifice, excuse me, is talking about is supposedly your meal, your daily meal, your food, what you eat, your daily sacrifice. You know how you pray over your food, give thanks for your daily bread. You know what I'm saying unto the Most High God. You know what I'm saying that's to my extending what your daily sacrifice is talking about. Yeah, I could, you know, I could be wrong and could be misinformed or have a, you know, a lack of understanding on the term you know what I'm saying so that's why I want you to dig for yourself but you know what I'm saying so he ain't talking about when these, this abomination gets set, set up he gonna take away this daily sacrifice you know what I'm saying uh, like in the scriptures previously this would be like a, a daily burnt offering you see what I'm saying and like your food is your burnt offering you got your food on your plate that's your daily burnt offering you see what I'm saying you just sacrifice that so it can sustain your temple that animal you see what i'm saying so you, 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 feel, you feel what i'm saying with it but but um this daily sacrifice comes with the abomination of desolation so when that is instilled or placed that gets taken away so keep that into you know what i'm saying whatever perspective you can fit it in so you know just going over the verse again it says so he shall take away the daily sacrifice and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. Alright, so we're going to jump to 12. Okay, so we're in Daniel 12. And I want to start at verse 9. You feel me? Say, um, and he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Verse 11, and from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, okay, um, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Now remember, you can read that in Revelation, because like on my last video, we read it in Revelation, I was like, that's a reference to Daniel. Hold on. Alright, sorry about that. So like I was saying, you know what I'm saying? So this right here uh, is also mentioned in Revelation, just like the beast 
you know what I'm saying, with the um the horns and the crowns and the heads. And Daniel is also mentioned in Revelation. Because remember, the words of Daniel is for the time of the end. So the the verse we were looking at it from was Revelation 12. Remember, you know what I'm saying, when when the beast, the red dragon with the seven horns, Seven heads and the ten horns, seven crowns upon his head. You know what I'm saying? And then the the woman, she fled into the wilderness, where she had a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. You see what I'm saying? So when it's telling you that this abomination and this wickedness and this tribulation gonna hit the earth, that's also the same amount of time that the woman eat. To, uh, to flee in the wilderness and be nourished in the wilderness. You see what I'm saying? As it say, as it say down, down here in verse 14, and the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where is she, where she is nourished for a time, times, and a half a time. So we know what that's talking about based on verse 6. It give us a, a number of days. You feel me? So, and they say she's going to be nourished at that, that, that amount of time from the face of the serpent. Alright, so, you know what I'm saying? So, we get that reference right there back in Daniel. And, you know what I'm saying? We can kind of figure, fit, uh, understand what that's referring to. Then they say down here in verse 12, Blessed is he that waited and cometh to the, uh, 1,300 and, uh, 1,305 and 35 days. So we give us another point of time that we need to at least endure too. You know what I'm saying? But they say, but go thy way to the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of days. Okay, so now we got the little scriptural, a little scriptural background information on the abomination of desolation. We're going to get a few more scriptures coming out of Maccabees, first Maccabees, but then we're gonna get into the meat, into the correlation. Okay, so it say the abomination of desolation or the desolating sacrament is a term found in the book of Daniel. It also occurs in first Maccabees and the synopsis gospels of the New Testament. Alright, we're gonna scroll down some. We're gonna come back to the etymology. Okay, so you see, we just got these out of Daniel. I want to get these verses right here out of um first Maccabees. And I'm gonna hit the loop, the loop verse towards the I'm saving that one. So you can kind of see how it all plays, you know what I'm saying? But we're gonna get to the loop verse. Um, according to 1st Maccabees chapter 1 verse 54, the abomination was erected on the altar of burnt offerings. Now on the 15th day of the month, just live, in the 145th year, they erected a desolating sacrifice on the altar of burnt offering they also built altars in surrounding towns in judah okay so they built altars in surrounding towns in judah okay and a desolating sacrifice on the altar of burnt offering okay now in verse six uh excuse me chapter six verse seven in first maccabees it say that they had torn down the abomination that he had erected on the altar in Jerusalem, uh, and that they had surrounded the sanctuary with high walls, high walls, as before, and, all, and also Beth Zer, his town. Okay, so we got in Maccabees we're talking about. See, that's why a lot of people refer to the Temple of Baal due to this altar, this altar and this temple being erected. Now you say like you know. When this altar and temple gets erected, the Most High, it gets angry. Like these people in Maccabees was in the temple sacrificing swine upon the altar. So, you know what I'm saying? That's when, you know what I'm saying, shit get really real. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and become desolate. You feel me? So, now that's, that's like the main circulating understanding. But the reason why I say check this out is because, um, it could be possibly talking about something. So we got we got the verses in the New Testament itself for Luke. We're gonna come back to that. But I wanna jump down here real quick. And I wanna show y'all something. We're gonna jump down to the views 
And um, so this is what this is what it says in the rabbinical literature. It says the rabbinical consensus consensus is that the expression refers to speaking about the abomination of desolation to the 168 BCE desecration of the second temple, Herod's temple. Keep this person in mind, Herod. We all know who that is, but you know what I'm saying? We're going to touch on that. So the desecration of the second temple, Herod's temple, by erecting, by the erection of a Zeus statue. So this right here say they erected a Zeus statue, right, in the sacred precinct. By Antiochus Fourth, I think it's the fourth. It's, it's Epiphanes. Epiphanes. I don't know how to say that. The flashpoint of the Maccabean revolt. Some rabbis, however, see in it all see in it an allusion to Manasseh, who uh, is reported to have set up a carved image in the house of God. All right, I want to jump down to the modern biblical scholarship uh, views. See what they think about. It. They say the first Maccabean usage of the term points. To the actions of Antiochus the Fourth Epiphany in the mid uh, second century BC, specifically he set up an altar, probably to Zeus or Baal Shemin. Okay, so pay attention to that because they said probably to Zeus or Baal Shemin. Right now, Zeus is a Greek god. Now we know Herod was an Idumean set up to rule over Jerusalem by Roman occupants. So now they say right here Zeus or Baal Shemin. Now I'm going to show you who they going to also refer to Baal Shemin too. You see what I'm saying? And how that God is basically the Roman Zeus. All right. So, you know what I'm saying? Just keep that in mind. They say, in the second temple uh, in Jerusalem and sacrifice swine on it. Good Lord. Good Lord. Around the year 168 B.C., many modern scholars believe that Daniel 9, 27, 11, 31, uh, 12, and 11 are examples of Vaticinium ex eventu, prophecies after the event relating to Antioch. Okay? So, okay, even right here, you see what they say, what they say, Matthew 24 and Mark 13 are prophecies after the event about the siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD by the Roman general type. All right, so, um, jump down just a little bit. Um, let me see, it was some futurism, it was something these people said that was kind of interesting. They say, uh, Interpreters with a futurist perspective think that Jesus' prophecy deals with a literal end times antichrist. Futurists consider the abomination of desolation prophecy of Daniel mentioned by Jesus in Matthew 24, Mark 13 to refer to a future, I mean to an event in the future. When a seven year peace treaty will be signed between Israel and a world leader, a, ro a world ruler called the man of lawlessness. Mm. Or the Antichrist. Interesting. But check this out. It say um whatever future like Arthur uh Pink in his work, The Antichrist, premillennialist. Okay, I'm skip sorry about that. It's not it's not too far for us. Hold on, let me fix that. Okay, so pre premillennialist futurist like Arthur Pink in his works, The Antichrist, attributed vast portions of within the old testament old and new testament to his future figure that will rise to global prominence politically that will rise to global prominence politically economically and military by setting up government structures possessing sweeping powers over the affairs of mankind okay so that's interesting too so we're going to jump up to the etymology because remember in the modern scholarship uh the modern biblical scholarship views they said it was probably referring to an altar set up probably to zeus or Baal Shemin. Okay, so going up here to the etymology, this is what it says. Okay, in both biblical and rabbinical Hebrew, the word abomination is a familiar term for idol. Now understand that an abomination is a familiar term with idol. 
You understand what an idol is? Idol could be a lot of things. Even a person. You feel what I'm saying? Just like your little rappers or whatnot and your, your movie stars and your celebrities or whatnot. You can idolize them folks. You feel me? And they can become idols. So understand that. Keep that in perspective as well. You know what I'm saying? So it say the word abomination is a familiar term for an idol. And therefore may have the same application in Daniel. Which should, which should accordingly be rendered um, in agreement with Ezra 9, 1 and 4. Motionless abomination or also appalling abomination. The suggestions of many scholars Hoffman, Nestle, Bavon and others that um and and others that as a designation Jupiter. Okay, you see what they say right there? As a designation for Jupiter, it is simply an international perversion of his usual apparel, Baal Shemin, Lord of Heaven. So that's what Baal Shemin means. It means Lord of Heaven. Okay, it's quite plausible in the test to the perversion of Beelzebub. So, well, what we get right here, they say, is a, as a designation for Jupiter, um, simply an international, I mean, um, excuse me, intentional perversion of his usual appellation, Baal Shemin, Lord of Heaven. So, like I said, down there, the temple was possibly um, made to Zeus. Or Baal Shemin, which are basically Zeus or Jupiter. So, you know, so we're going to click on Jupiter real quick. Okay. Jupiter is the god of the sky, right? It's the god of the sky. Hold on, let me let it finish loading. Okay, Jupiter is the god of the sky and thunder. Okay. He's the god of the sky and thunder. God of sky and lightning, and the king of the gods. So in Rome, in ancient Roman religion and mythology. So this dude is basically the Roman Zeus. You feel what I'm saying? He's the god of the sky and thunder, the lightning bolt, and he's the chief god of the gods. You see what I'm saying? Jupiter was the chief deity of the Roman state and religion. Okay? It says, Jupiter is usually thought to have originated as a sky god. His identifying implement, so the things you identify him is, is the thunderbolt, excuse me, is the thunderbolt. And his primary sacred animal is the eagle. So here you go with the eagle. You feel what I'm saying? And become one of the most common symbols of the Roman army. Bam, so the eagle, you know what I'm saying, these symbols possessed by Jupiter which is basically the Roman Zeus or, or primary symbol for the Roman army okay so like as I say it'll, it'll even tell you see the Romans regard Jupiter as the equivalent of the Greek Zeus you see what I'm saying so okay so back to the abomination of desolation page on the etymology tab we get them right here referring Jupiter to Baal Shemin. And before they said the temple was possibly to Zeus or Baal Shemin. So if Baal Shemin is Zeus, I mean Baal Shemin is Jupiter, Jupiter and Zeus is one and the same person. You can kind of get what I'm saying. See, Lord of Heaven, um, Jupiter is the God of the sky. Sky, Heaven, Shamayim in the Hebrew is both the same word. So we're going to click on Baal Shemin just to kind of show you like this, whoever this person is, you know what I'm saying, it, this is this is like a Baal character, like a Baal, like the Temple of Baal that they say that this thing is talking about. You know what I'm saying? This is this character. But it's crazy because this is a Semitic God dealing with Canaan and Phoenicia, um, Syria, um, see, Aram, the Aramic language for Lord of Heaven. But um, check out what it say though. Um, let me see. Hold on. Okay. It say Lord of Heaven was a Northwest Semitic God and a title applied to different gods at different places or times in ancient Eastern, uh, Middle Eastern inscriptions. So, okay, check it out. I'm going to skip down here and say Baal Shemin was one of the two supreme gods and the sky god all right, of pre-Islamic Palmyra in ancient Assyria. Uh, Baal being the other supreme god, you know what I'm saying? 
there his attributes they say there his attributes were the eagle and the lightning bolt you feel what i'm saying just like your boy jupiter so it's you can kind of see the correlation but let's get back on this this jupiter character because it's, it's something kind of interesting about it okay so this is where it get kind of interesting because they're talking about this abomination of desolation being referred to possibly this temple or art altar dedicated to um these pagan gods, these foreign gods right here, um, Zeus, or which is basically uh, the Greek version of the Roman Jupiter, which is Baal Shemin. You feel what I'm saying? So now check this out. See this part right here? We on the Jupiter tab. It says he was the chief deity of the early um, Capitoli Capitoline Triad with Mars and Quirinius. So we're going to click on this this Mars person because Mars is the son of Jupiter, right? See, you can see it um, hold on. right here, parents, Jupiter and Juno. So his father is Jupiter. Okay, so we're going to dig on him. Mars, in ancient Roman, Roman religion and myth, Mars was the god of war so peep that mars was the god of war see what i'm saying jupiter to the romans is the chief god and his son mars is the god of war just like to the greeks zeus is the chief god and his son Ares is the god of war see what i'm saying so he's the god of war and also agricultural and agricultural guardian so that's important as well because we agriculture we're dealing with what food right production uh you know what i'm saying tilling the ground so and, th and things like that so we're talking about food right now so this mars person is the god of war and also an agricultural guardian so he's the guardian of the agriculture keep that in mind they say um a combination of characteristics of, of early rome he was second in importance only the Jupiter. So Jupiter, the chief god, this Joker right here is like, you know what I'm saying? It, he's like, it's like Jupiter is the Most High, and and Mars is Jesus. You feel what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just using that in retrospect. But so he's second important only to his father Jupiter, and he was the most prominent of military gods in the religion of the Roman army. You see that? in the religion of the Roman army. So in the, the Roman army got like his own a religion, I guess. But anyway, so you see what you see what I'm saying though. It says he is the most prominent of military gods in the religion of the Roman army. So that's very important. Okay, we're gonna, gonna come back and we're gonna touch on it. It says under the influence of Greek culture, Mars was identified with the Greek god Ares. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so Understand that. Uh, guardian of soldiers and farmers. God of war. See that? Pater of the Roman people. Father of the Roman people. Because they say his son, Romulus, is the one who founded Rome. Okay? So, he is the guardian of soldiers and farmers. Keep that in mind. Okay, I'm going to jump over here to um this, this little link. I, uh, this little... BibleHistory.com, okay, it says, Illustration of Mars, the War God of Rome. In ancient, reading, reading right here, it says, In ancient Roman religion, Mars was the God of War. He was considered to be the second most important deity. Jupiter was the chief. It was also believed that Romulus, the founder of Rome, was the son of Mars. See what I'm saying? Okay. He was worshipped during war time. You see that? Mars was worshipped during war time. And his priest, the Sali, danced in full armor carrying the sacred shield. His altar was in the Campus Martius. Alright? Camp his altar is in the, in the Campus Martius. We're going we're gonna to dig on that a little bit. Where warfare exercises were held. Okay? So where his altar is held, warfare exercises were held. Mars was considered to be the Greek Ares and the son of Juno. Okay. 
Now it's also funny because see right where it say all this, jumping down here, as you can see, it say the Bible mentions a lot regarding idols. So it it's got a whole bunch of verses talking about where it has the word idol in. It. Where under where it's talking about Greek the Greek god Mars. So that's that's just kind of funny. Okay, so coming back to the Mars tab, we're going to click right here on this Campus Martius tab because it's a Mars altar in the Campus Martius. So that's where they built the Mars altar. It was built in the Campus Martius. All right, so just, just real fast, it's a Campus Martius. Uh, Latin for Field of Mars was publicly owned area in ancient Rome, um, two square kilometers. Okay, so okay, so let me di uh, find what I want out of here. All right, just real quick, we gonna um, we gonna we gonna come right here. Okay, it's talking about the an antiquity. We still on campus, Martius. All right, it say this land between the city and the Tiber. Uh, the property of Rome's last Etruscan king, Tequarinus Superbus. <laughs> After his defeat and exile, the plain was dedicated to the god Mars. So after they defeated him, or what I guess what what not, the plain was dedicated to the god Mars. Because remember up here they say the, the the field of Mars. All right, it's a um the where we at the plain was dedicated to the god Mars. Roman men assembled every spring before heading off to fight hostile tribes. Okay, in the field of Mars, Roman the Roman army they assembled there heading off to fight hostile tribes. Okay, surrounding Rome and citizens gathered for important religious festivals. With the exception of a small altar to Mars near the center of the field. Okay, it wasn't until the 5th century that any visible changes were made to the field. So these people used to gather around this altar of Mars in this field before they go off heading to fight hostile tribes. Tribes that hostile, you know what I'm saying? Um, they would gather around that, and that would be like a, a, a ceremonial thing for these people. Okay, jumping down. Um, let me see. Okay, so right here it say in 435 BC the Villa Publica was established, and they prepared 300 meter clearing. Mm. I don't even know what that's talking about. It kind of just hit me, but clearing. Anyway, the area was meant to be a gathering place, a uh, gathering space for citizens to congregate every five years to be counted in a census. So some population population. Okay, free from any permanent structures. At this particular time, they are free from any permanent structures. Okay. And no additions would be made for another two centuries. Now that's that's just interesting. Okay, jumping down. Um, you see right here. It say the area was also used um, as the assembling ground for elections. Okay, Julius Caesar. Czar. Look at that prefix to the name. It's like Nebuchadnezzar. The czar is like a... You feel what I'm saying? Man, this is Babylon, Rome. We, we, we didn't know the same folks. Anyways, you know what I'm saying? Plan for the Sayupta enclosure used for elections to be placed there. Okay? They were later completed by his heir, Augustus, which is Octavian. So keep that in mind when we're dealing with his Mars, we're also dealing with this person. That's that's important for for a reason, but we're gonna come back to it and just say we're gonna come back because we're gonna go right here and get this um 
this part right here in um it's significant to say in Latin Campus Martius means field of Mars a god highly considered in Roman pantheon Paul W. Jacobs III attributes the significance of Mars to his patronage of both military and agriculture so think about that military and agriculture food and war is is, is, is dealing with this god here okay in the calendar year March was the month named after Mars right because think about that you know that's the springtime and this god is the god of military so you know that that would make sense but anyways uh, after Mars this month first marked the beginning of when the console started to work until 153 BCE the campus Martius may have been named after Ara Martius Mars Alta, check that out, which was talked about starting in the 8th century BCE. It is not known exactly what the um, Aura Martis was, was built or when it was destroyed. So it was not exactly known when the Aura Martis was built or when it was destroyed. Excuse me for that. Um, Alright, so just, just the one to give y'all that. Uh, that little bit of background information on that. Okay, so coming back to the Abomination of Desolation page on the Modern Biblical Scholarship tab, as we see it say he set up an altar probably to Zeus or Baal Shemin. Baal Shemin is referred to Jupiter. Jupiter and Zeus is basically the same God, the two different pantheons, right? Okay, and he got a son that's the God of War, right? Alright, so keep that in mind. But, um, it's interesting because they say even up here in the rabbin rabbinical li literature, uh, they say that um, it, it refers to the desecration of the second temple, Herod's temple, by by the erection of a Zeus statue. Okay, so now when we deal with Herod, it, that's that's going to be kind of interesting. Okay, because let, like when we jump over here to Herod, let's, let's dig a little bit on on Herod. Okay, Herod, known as Herod the Great, was a Roman client king of Judea, Herodian. You see what I'm saying? Because um, Herod, your boy, is an Edomite, right? Um, let me see if he's going to give it to us. Okay, so in it's a right here in um, biography. It is generally accepted that Herod was born, you know, I'm saying. 73 BC in Idumea, see, south of Judea, right? He was the second son of Antipater. Antipater. The Idumean. That's weird. Antipater. I know Pater as a Roman word is father. Anti father. I don't know. That's weird. Anyways, the Idumean, okay? So, high rank officials. Anyway, skipping that, say, Herod's father was by descent an Edomite. Right, whose ancestors converted to Judaism. So Herod was raised a Jew. So Herod is an Edomite Jew, right? So what's interesting, okay, you see right here, they say that in 41 BC, Herod and his brother Phasael were named a tetra, tetrarchs by the Roman leader Mark Anthony. Okay, by the Roman leader Mark Anthony. So also when you dig into the reign in his reign, Herod's reign in Judea, you see right here, Her Herod was granted the title of king of Judea by the Roman Senate. And such, he was a vessel of the Roman Empire uh, expected to support the interests of his Roman patron. Okay, not long after he assumed control of Judea. Herod needed to show his worthiness to be king of Judea to the new emperor Augustus, who was who was uh, still known as Octavian. So right now Herod is is um is a king over Judea under the emperorship, if that's even a word, under the emperorship of Augustus, right? Because remember in the campus Martius. The field of Mars, right? When we scroll down, um, remember what it says? This area was also used for the assembling grounds for election. 
Julius Caesar planned for the Septil, an enclosure used for elections, to be placed there. Uh, they were later completed by his heir, Augustus Octavian. You see what I'm saying? So Octavian, right, the campus, check out what it say right here, the, camp, the campus Martius also held the era Pacia, the altar of peace, built by the Senate to mark the establishment of the peace by Augustus. So, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like war and peace. Almost like if they if they instill martial law, it would be to what? To uh, bring peace, so they say. Because the country is in a state of emergency and it is not in a peaceful state. <clears throat> so, even right here, you got the aura passes. Passes. The aura passes is an altar that was built during the reign of Augustus. Okay? Altars were used for sacrifice to pagan gods in ancient Rome. Okay, they even tell you it right there. Alright, uh, agricultural significance. Um, it, it didn't have a roof or doors that the gods were depicted looking down from, from the friezes, whatever friezes, indicated that the person undertaking the vows was looked upon. When Senate, uh, when the Senate decreed the building area, uh, our apostles for Augusta, they did not specify any restrictions or architects. So, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so there you go. So, King Herod, the boy, is under, he is now under the rule of the emperorship of Augustus, who, in the campus, Martius builds this altar. You see what I'm saying? Builds this altar, right? And this person right here got to do what he got to do, right? To, uh, to show his worthiness to the king. Okay, and it tell you that, um, hold on, I'm sorry. No, I'm always clicking on something. And it tell you that he go around building colossal, um, structures, right? Oh, let me see if I can get that. Alright, so, you say the history of his legacy has been polarized, uh, has a polarized opinion. He, he is known for his colossal building projects throughout Judea. Okay, including the ex his expansion of the second temple in Jerusalem, therefore making it Herod's temple. So this Herod is known for building colossal projects throughout Judea and this doing whatever he did in the second temple. Okay, and and Herod was granted the title of king of Judea by the Roman Senate and was a vassal of the Roman Empire, expected to support the interests of the Roman patron. Like this person right here, who built a altar in the campus, um, excuse me, in the campus Martius, right? The field of Mars, where they do war demonstrations. Okay, and they say that in the abomination of desolation, it could be referring to the desecration of the second Herod's temple. By erection of a Zeus statue. You see what I'm saying? Or Zeus or Jupiter. Hell, or even a Mars. Okay? And, and see, that's where we're going to get into it. Because we're going to go, and we're going to go to the online etymology. Alright, so we're going to go to the online etymology. And we're going to type in the word Marshall. Right? Alright, now Pete, what the first, the first thing say? Late 14th century, okay, warlike, from Latin martius, of Mars, or war, from Mars, genitive martis, Roman god of war, okay, see Mars, related martially, martial law, military rule over civilians, okay, so, Martial law is the military rule over civilians and is dealing with this God, this Roman God, Mars, right here. The Ro Roman God of War, Mars. Alright? Now that is very, that is very crazy. Because remember, right? This abomination of desolation. Right? That maketh desolate. And they were referring it to a temple built by Jupiter. Or Zeus, Herod, under Roman rule. 
uh, under the king who built the temple in the the campus mar where they where they have war ceremony where they you know what I'm saying where they gather up for war. Just keep all that in mind. You know what I'm saying. All right, so we're gonna go over here to martial law and we're gonna read something. Martial law is the imposition of the highest ranking military officer as the governor or head of the government. Now, look at that, dog. Just check that out, right? Okay, because typically the imposition of martial law accompanies curfews, the suspension of civil law, excuse me, civil rights, ideas, corpus, whatever that is, and the appellation application of extension of military law or military justice okay civilians defying martial law may be suggested to military uh tribunal okay but peep that because it say that martial law is the imposition of the highest ranking military officer as governor martial law stems from the root word mars from the Roman God. We went to the Roman God um tab. Hold on, let me get it. Okay. Mars. He's the what? He was the most prominent of the military gods in the religion of the Roman army. Okay, and he is the god of soldiers and farmers. So he is the god of war and food. Remember when the abomination gets set up, he's gonna take away the what the daily sacrifice. Right. Okay, that's that's how you gonna eat. Because you can't eat without a what? A chip. Okay? And guess what? You remember you can't buy a cell without the chip. If martial law gets implemented, it's written in that bit by executive order that you got to get a two way radio RFID radio frequency um identification device, something like that. Chip. So understand that, okay? Because Mars is this Roman god of war, right? And he's the god of food. He's the god of, of war. You see what I'm saying? His father, there was temples built of his father, supposedly, or of him. Who knows? That when that big bell got built and armies surrounded it and did their thing, shit became desolate. Okay? Because now we're going to go to Luke and see what it says. Okay? So getting we got matthew and mark right understanding that this is the same story of christ in all three chapters mark matthew mark and luke that that's telling about the same thing you feel what i'm saying but you see you see the the the, the premise of both of these right see when you see the abomination and desolation spoken of by daniel the prophet when you see the abomination of desolation standing where it ought not to be, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountain. Right? Just like I say up here. Then let those which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Alright, going to Luke. Matter of fact, I'm gonna get it in the East. Okay, as you can see, we got same subtitles. Look what it says. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies then know that desolation thereof is not. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them which are in the countries enter therein too. So check that out. <clears throat> We're going to go back so you can get, you know what I'm saying, all three verses, and look at them at once. Here we go right here. You got the same pretense, right? This right here talking about the abomination of desolation. This one talking about the abomination of desolation. This one ain't. But you got it telling you that when that's set up, dip, right? Flee into the mountains, right? Flee into the mountains, right? But this one say in a place of abomination of desolation. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then you know that desolation has come near. Then let those then flee. You see what I'm saying? So it's referring in, in this to a surrounding of armies in your residency. When that happens, you know that desolation is near. Then you dip. You see what I'm saying? 
that's probably why uh, martial law stems from the Roman God of War. A military rule over civilians. A, a god of food. Remember Mars is the what? He is the agricultural guardian. So by him is dictated to whether or not you eat. Do you see what I'm saying? So understand though, could Christ and these prophecies be telling us when we see this, remember hold on, I know I'm jumping around y'all, but this like I say, this shit kinda new to me, this shit kinda weird and crazy to me as well. So when you say standing where it ought not to be, and you got this leader who's gonna take full power if he stands in a seat that he will only be due to the implication of this law, right, based upon this Roman God, right, who stem has roots stemming from the first time. You see what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying, man. Understand, dog. If that was to, if that was to happen, you feel what I'm saying? Is that what the prophecy is telling us to do? That's why I said I need y'all opinion. I need y'all to help me out on that. You know what I'm saying? Understand what 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 I'm looking for. When when that happened, because like my dog on um, 432 drop, put the video of the King Alpha playing. Let uh the Rex 84. They coming around your ass up. Negro, you know what I'm saying? That bit, they coming to round you up. You feel what I'm saying? They putting your ass in them camp. They like that's they bit say Auschwitz style. You feel what I'm saying? So when you understand what he was saying, the same incident that needs to incite martial law, nigga, it's the same incident that needs to enforce the King Alpha plan. And that's when shit get real. You feel what I'm saying? And that's when you need to go and stand in your holy place. Whatever your holy place might be. I know where mine going to be. And that's going to be amongst the sacred tree. You feel what I'm saying? I ain't going to say too much. But you know what it is. So long family. Stay blessed. Let me know what it is.